Welcome back third graders to our science lessons. In this video, we're going to cover explorations two and three, and then do the lesson check and lesson roundup together. As you watch this video, you may follow along in your book. In exploration two, we're going to continue to explore how physical and behavioral adaptations help organisms survive. Organisms have traits that allow them to survive in their habitat. They also have adaptations that make them very successful living in their environments. This leopard seal lives in the Antarctic. It has traits and adaptations to survive in this extremely cold habitat. A leopard seal's fins enable it to swim in water. The spots on the seal's skin help the animal hide from predators. In your book, page 288, number six says, list how other characteristics of the leopard seal make it well adapted to its environment. We already talked about the seal's skin and fins. We still have the teeth and the blubber. The blubber is the fat that keeps the animals warm. Think about how these characteristics can help this animal in its environment. So the seal's blubber, as we said, helps keep it warm in cold water since it lives in the Antarctic and its teeth help it tear up its food. You might already know that there are different regions of the world that have different climates or weather patterns. Regions around the equator or the center of Earth get direct sunlight, which means that the weather is warmer year round. However, the polar regions receive less direct sunlight, which means that these regions are cold year round. Let's look together at these pictures to know more about some of these animals' adaptations. You may also follow along in your book, page 289. In the first picture, we can see an opossum. When opossums become very scared, they pretend to be dead and give off a smelly odor. This makes predators think that the opossum is really dead. In the second picture, we can see what appears to be a kind of flower. These flowers are called sweet pine saps. They grow under oak and pine trees. Its flowers are protected from animals with camouflage or blending in with its surroundings. In this case, it blends in with dead leaves. In the third picture, we can see two butterflies. What if I told you that these two butterflies are not the same? One butterfly is a monarch butterfly and the other is a viceroy butterfly. Monarch butterflies are poisonous to many animals. Viceroy butterflies are not. Viceroy butterflies mimic, or copy, the colors of the monarchs. This type of adaptation is called mimicry. In the fourth and final picture, we have a flower called a bee orchid. You might easily guess why it's called so. Well, its markings on its petal mimic a female bee. The flower gives off a scent that attracts male bees to the flower. This improves the flower's chances to reproduce. Now we know that organisms have different kinds of adaptations which help them survive. One of the main adaptations that some animals have is camouflage. Camouflage, as we said before, is when an organism blends in with its surroundings. Another adaptation is mimicry. Mimicry is when an organism mimics or copies another organism. Let's watch this video together to see more examples of camouflage in nature. Shh, we're playing hide and seek, but I can't seem to find squeaks. Can you? <laughs> Here at the fort, we're pretty good at hide and seek. You know why? Because we've learned a lot of great tricks from nature. 
There are lots of kinds of animals that have their own kind of hide and seek. Some animals hide so they can sneak up on their prey. Other animals hide so they don't become dinner. Either way, these animals don't hide behind curtains or under tables like we do when we want to play hide and seek. They hide in plain sight. That sounds amazing, and they can do it thanks to camouflage. One SciShow Kids viewer named Rianne wants to know, what is camouflage and how does it work? Great question. Camouflage is a way for animals to confuse or hide from other animals. Since lots of different animals are either hiding or seeking, there are lots of different kinds of camouflage in nature. One easy way for an animal to camouflage itself is to just blend in with the background. Let's say you take a quiet walk in the woods. What kind of animals would you expect to see? Well, where I live, I might see some squirrels or a deer or maybe a cute little field mouse. And you know what these mammals all have in common? They're all shades of brown or gray. They match the color of the tree bark and the forest floor where they live. And this makes them harder to spot. Lots of animals blend in with their environment, but not all of them rely on their color to do it. Some animals get help from the patterns on their skin and fur. Tigers have big black stripes, which makes them harder to find in tall grass. And the spots on baby deer, called fawns, look like patterns that sunlight makes as it shines down through the trees and grass. So when they curl up among some plants for a nice nap, they blend right in. Now, animals that live in the water have a different environment that they have to blend into. Many ocean animals like dolphins, sharks, and whales are often light gray or bluish to match the color of the water. But they have another trick too. They're lighter on their stomachs than they are on their back. Look at this shark. It's called a gray reef shark. If you were swimming above the shark looking down, its blue and gray back would blend in with the waters of the ocean below it. But if you were swimming under the shark and looking up, its white belly would match the lighter water above as the sun shines through it. You might say this shark is covered from top to bottom. And some animals don't just take on the color or pattern of their surroundings. They camouflage themselves using their shape. Take a look at this guy. Can you see it? It's called the walking leaf. And no wonder, the walking leaf not only has the color and shape of a green leaf, it even has markings on its body that make it look like it's been nibbled on. Now, try to spot this leafy sea dragon. Covered in small fins all over its body, the leafy sea dragon blends perfectly in the seaweed where it lives. The leafy sea dragon even moves like a piece of seaweed, gracefully tumbling around in the water. That's some convincing camouflage. But of course, a lot of animals don't naturally look like things in their environment. So some of them have found ways to hide themselves by playing dress up. The dresser crab walks along the seafloor looking for little things that it can wear on its shell, like coral, sea anemones, or seaweed. When it's all covered up and sitting still, the crab is nearly invisible. Then there's this insect called the masked hunter. When they're young, masked hunters are covered in tiny hairs. When it throws dust on top of its body, it sticks to the hairs, covering it completely. It's kind of like an invisibility cloak. So there you have it. Animals use all kinds of tricks to keep them hidden. And every animal has a slightly different way to do it, depending on what kind of animal it is and where it lives. Thanks for learning about camouflage with us. Do you have a question about something that you'd like to learn more about? Get help from a parent and leave a comment below or email us at kids at the and we'll see you next time. In your books, page 290, we're going to solve number seven together. We have the following words to fill the blanks with physical, behavioral, adaptations, and habitat or habitats. Read the sentences below and try to guess the answers. Pause the video and take your time, then unpause it to continue. Okay, so for organisms to survive, they would need adaptations to use in their habitat or where they live. Some adaptations are blank characteristics of the organism's structure. Structure means body. So which kind of characteristic refers to the organism's body? Yep, it's the physical characteristics. Finally, other adaptations are behavioral characteristics of how an animal acts or behaves. On the same page in your book, we're going to do number nine. They want us to describe the relationship between the leopard seal's environment and its spotted top coat and light belly. 
How does having a spotted top coat and a light belly help a seal survive in its environment? Well, camouflage is blending in with the background. The spots on the top coat of the seal blend in with the deep sea floor while looking down on the seal. The light color on the belly blends in with the sunlight when looking up at the seal from below. You may want to pause the video here to copy the answer on your book. Now we have reached the third part of this lesson. In Exploration 3, we're going to learn more about the relationships between habitats and adaptations. As we proceed through this lesson, we're going to discover that similar organisms can have different adaptations if they live in different habitats. Even organisms living in similar habitats can still have different adaptations to the same environmental conditions. If you look in your book, page 291, number 10, we're going to read each paragraph and fill in the blanks accordingly. In part A, we have a picture of a mangrove tree and a sand live oak tree. And in part B, we have a camel and a vicunia. Look closely at each picture, then read the paragraph below them to guess the answers. Pause the video if you need more time. In part A, we can see that the mangrove tree on the left grows in wet soil because of the water around it. The sand live oak tree on the right grows in dry soil. So the mangrove tree would survive well in swamp habitat, which has a lot of water. In part B, it's obvious that the camel and the vicunia are related. The camel on the left lives in the desert, while the vicunia on the right lives in the mountains. The vicunia has thick fur that protects it from the cold temperatures. In your books, page 292, let's do number 12 before we check out the previous picture. In number 12, we want to predict what would happen if a polar bear were in a hot rainforest environment knowing that polar bears live in a very cold habitat. Polar bears have fur and blubber, or fat, that help them adapt to cold weather. So, this would make it overheat and less likely to survive in a hot rainforest environment. On the same page in the book, we can see a picture of purple tansies. Purple tansy grows in places that get little rain for long periods. Their seeds do not sprout until the rainy season when the plant can get the moisture it needs. So purple tansies don't get a lot of rain, which means that one of the ways that it is adapted to dry weather is having seeds that don't sprout until it rains. On page 292, we can see a picture of bearberries. Bearberry plants have thick leathery leaves that keep moisture inside the plant during dry seasons with little rain. Bearberries also live in dry areas, so thick leaves are one of the bearberries adaptations to dry weather as well. Now that we know that purple tansies and bearberries live in similar environments, yet have different adaptations, which environment do you think these plants would not be able to live in? Well, because these plants do well in dry environments, they would probably have a hard time surviving in a wet environment. In your books, pages 299 to 301, we're going to answer the lesson check and roundup together. Pause the video here if you would like to read the questions on your own and try to guess the answers. Then unpause to continue. Remember, you can pause the video anytime to copy the answers on your book. If we think back to the beginning of the lesson, let's try to answer the following questions. Why does the octopus change color to blend in with the environment? How is changing color both a physical and behavioral adaptation? 
and how is camouflage an adaptation? Well, the octopus blends into its background to hide from predators or catch food. This is a physical adaptation because its body changes, and it's also a behavioral adaptation because it knows when to do it. Camouflage makes the octopus more likely to survive because fewer predators will see it. In number two, we have four different kinds of adaptations. We're going to write whether each one is behavioral or physical on the line after it. Now remember, physical adaptation is a part of the organism's body, while a behavioral adaptation is the way an organism acts. So the first one, a possum playing dead. Do you think it's a behavioral or physical adaptation? Well, since the opossum is acting in a certain way, then the adaptation is behavioral. The second one is polar bear's thick fur. The thick fur on the polar bear is part of its body, so it's a physical adaptation. The lizard moving towards the sunlight. It is moving towards the sunlight, which means it's acting in a certain way, so the adaptation is behavioral. And the last adaptation, the duck's webbed feet. This is the shape of the feet of the duck, so it's part of the duck's body, so it's a physical adaptation. Now page 300, number 3. Which is an example of adaptation that helps with reproduction? Is it A, a cactus covered with spines? B, a pine sap that looks like dead leaves? C, a bee orchid flower that looks and smells like a female bee? And D, blackberry branches that grow 10 feet long? If you remember previously, we said that a bee orchid flower looks like a female bee in order to attract male bees, which will help with reproduction. So the answer is C. Number four, which best describes an example of camouflage? Is it A, blackberries are segmented? B, parrots have strong wings to fly? C, viceroy butterflies look like monarch butterflies? Or D, leopard seals have dark coats on their backs to blend in. So if you remember, we said that camouflage is when an organism blends in in its surrounding. So the answer is D, where the leopard is blending in using its dark coats on its back. Number five, which animal is less likely to survive in a cool mountain environment than a vicunia? Is it A, a goat, B, an octopus, C, a bearberry, or D, a blackberry? Now, the only answer that stands out is the octopus, because it could never live in a mountain. Number six, which tree is adapted to live in a wet, swampy environment, a mangrove or a sand live oak? Check these pictures here to refresh your memory. Well, clearly, a mangrove tree is adapted to live in a wet, swampy environment, not a sand live oak tree. Now, the lesson roundup, page 301. Part A says, choose the words that make the sentences correct. We have the following words. Traits, adaptations, habitat or habitats, survive, physical, and behavioral. So plants and animals have traits that determines how they look and behave. An organism's traits determine how well it will survive in a habitat. If an organism has adaptations suited to its habitat, it is more likely to survive. For example, an armadillo lizard has a spiny covering, making it hard for its predators to eat. This is a physical adaptation. 
Naked mole rats run backward as fast as they do forward because they live in very narrow tunnels that are hard to turn around in. This is a behavioral adaptation. In part B, we're going to match each type of adaptation to the description. So we have sea slug spits out chemicals to distract predators. An old skin changes color with conditions. This is what an anole looks like. Lithops is a plant that looks like a rock. These are lithops. The following adaptations we're going to match are A, defense, B, mimicry, and C, camouflage. So the first one was sea slug spits out chemicals to distract predators. So the sea slug is doing this to defend itself against the predator. So it's defense A. The second one is an old skin changes color with conditions. It's changing its color to blend in with its environment. So it's C, camouflage. And the final one, Lithops is a plant that looks like a rock. So it looks like something, so it's copying the shape of something. So it is mimicry B. Finally, part C. Choose the words or phrases that make the sentences correct. We have wants, needs, pray, and well. Where organisms usually live depends on whether the environment can provide for the organism's needs. If the environment provides for all of the needs or the organism has adaptations suited to the environment, it will survive well. So this is it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will be learning more about how individual traits or group behavior can increase the chances of an organism's survival and reproduction. Stay tuned.